When you have a lot of water around your country, you apparently need a whole lot of ships to protect it. There are some extremely big and deadly sorts of vessels out there, and they're getting more and more dangerous and well-equipped all the time. And it seems that when one navy gets a new toy, well, then everyone else wants one as well. Here now are the 20 most advanced warships in the world. Number 20. The Congo-class destroyer As an island nation, Japan is totally surrounded by the sea, so it should come as no small wonder that they take their maritime security rather seriously indeed. And things in general don't get much more serious than a massive destroyer. This is the main guided missile destroyer in the Japan Maritime Self-Defense Force. They're equipped with the ultra-high-tech advanced Aegis Combat System. This is an American integrated naval weapon system that incorporates radars and computer systems in order to track and guide weapons to attack and destroy enemy targets. It is the standard across the highest level of naval technology in the world today, and is the thing to have on board for your warships if you want to be able to compete with the navies around the globe. These ships are actually also undergoing an upgrade of the system with the Aegis Ballistic Missile Defense System, a defense system which is designed to defend against short and medium-range ballistic missiles. The JS Congo was the first of the ships to receive the upgrade, and there are currently four Congo-class destroyers in service for the Japanese Navy. They're similar in design to the U.S. Navy's Arle Burke-class destroyer, and they have reduced radar cross-sections, but they have a different sort of operational requirement than the American ships, so they're designed accordingly. The internal design is most different, since these ships are required to carry extra commanding equipment. Otherwise, there are many similarities on the exterior and in the engine room. The propulsion is the same as the Arle Burke class, and the ship has a top speed of 30 knots. Before we go on, like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Now it's time for the fancy topic. This is apparently a ship that has been made in the UK. It's so top secret and so insanely expensive that nobody will even admit that it exists. And they certainly won't ever make another one. Well, why would they? It looks like it's fake to me, but what do you think? Could this be the stealth ship so powerful they couldn't build any more? Is it a bona fide boat? Or perhaps it's a load of old bull ship? Go on and have all the opinions about it in the comments section down below using the hashtag fancy topic. Number 19. The Kirov Class Battle Cruiser. Back in December of 1977, the Soviet Union launched the biggest warship, excluding aircraft carriers, that had been constructed since the Second World War. This was the Kirov Class Battle Cruiser, and it was a big one indeed. Five of these battle cruisers were planned, although in the end only four were completed. They were named for heroes of the Bolshevik Revolution, but after the collapse of the USSR, they had a quick name change. The nuclear-powered Kirov class warship was almost as big as the United States Iowa class, but these were much more modern and had better armaments and sensors than their American counterparts. They could be equipped with a huge amount of weaponry, as well as up to five helicopters equipped with anti-submarine equipment and missile guidance technology. The other sorts of weapons would vary from ship to ship, but could include vertical launch-range surface-to-air missiles, close-in-air defense in the form of missiles, and dual-purpose guns, as well as a whole lot of anti-submarine technology and torpedoes. These vessels were powered by a combination of nuclear energy and steam systems, and the massive size of the ships gives them plenty of space on board for a full command, control and communications outfit, and the size also made costs of the building the ships somewhat prohibitive, let alone the crazy expense in maintaining them as well. Number 18. The USS Iowa BB-61 now retired, the USS Iowa was once the lead ship of her class and the only one of this class that served in the Atlantic Ocean during the Second World War. In fact, in 1943, she was enlisted to carry President Roosevelt across the Atlantic to a conference with Churchill and Stalin. After this, the Iowa transferred to the Pacific Fleet and would be involved in the Allied operations in the Marshall Islands. 
She was then the Third Fleet flagship and was there at the Japanese surrender in Tokyo Bay in 1945. During the Korean War, the ship would be involved in battles on the coast of North Korea before being decommissioned and placed into what is affectionately known as the Mothball Fleet or the United States Navy Reserve. In 1984, the Iowa would then be brought back into service in the Atlantic and Pacific fleets as a reaction to the then recently expanded Soviet Navy. She finally got put out to pasture in 1990 after an unexplained explosion on one of her gun turrets had killed 47 sailors in the previous year. These days, the ship is a museum and permanently based in the port of Los Angeles. Number 17. Horizon Class Originally developed as a joint effort between France and Italy, the Horizon Class destroyer came into existence in 1992. The Horizon Class of warship is officially known as a frigate by the French Navy, but they're massive and stuffed full of powerful armaments, so they are, by all accounts, evidently destroyers by another name, which is generally considered to be a political choice. They've been enhanced with significant stealth technology that have reduced the radar cross-section of the vessel, as well as its noise levels, and the Horizon has been equipped with a phased-array multi-purpose radar that can detect air targets and provide missile tracking. As well as all of that, these warships have vertical launch systems for a variety of surface-to-air missiles and have anti-ship missiles, massive dual-purpose guns, and short-range surface-to-air missile launchers, as well as a couple of cannons. That's what the French ships have. The Italian ones also have three additional 76mm rapid-firing guns and two cannons for smaller surface targets. They all come equipped with torpedo launching capability and anti-torpedo systems for protection. There's room for one helicopter for duties, including long-range anti-sub warfare, search and rescue operations, and various other requirements. Currently, there are two Horizon-class ships in service in the French Navy and two in the Italian. Number 16. Mistral-class Amphibious Assault Ship Next up, we have another big old pile of ship that's been built by France. The Mistral class is an amphibious assault vessel, which is also sometimes known as a helicopter carrier or projection and command ship. These big boats are designed to carry as many as 16 Tiger helicopters, as well as four landing craft and as many as 70 vehicles. That also includes some sizable stuff like tanks. In fact, it can actually transport a full tank battalion if it's required to do so. The vessel is equipped to carry 450 troops and also contains a fully functional hospital with 69 beds. These ships are used as part of the NATO Response Force and also for UN peacekeeping activities. The ship has been at the center of a bit of international controversy in recent years. Two of these warships were on order to the Russian Navy since 2010, but after the aggressive moves by that nation in Ukraine, the order has been canceled and refunded by the French government. The ships have since been sold to Egypt instead. Number 15. Sejong the Great Class Destroyer This is the Sejong the Great Class Destroyer, which also goes by the slightly less grand-sounding KDX-3. These are the guided missile destroyers that make up part of the Republic of Korea Navy. These warships are fitted with the Aegis Combat System as well as multifunction radar antenna. These ships are 8,500 tons, having a maximum capacity of 11,000 tons at full load. This makes them the biggest destroyers in the South Korean Navy. They're part of a concerted effort to raise the level and profile of the Navy in maritime regions of South Korea. In fact, that's probably their primary purpose, as they live in the shadow of a permanent threat from the hostile nation of North Korea. These ships are equipped with the capability to track and monitor any missile that may be launched from literally anywhere within North Korea. And they're also pretty heavily armed themselves. These destroyers come equipped with main-level naval gun, missile launchers, anti-aircraft weapons, rolling airframe missile block, an all-round impressive cruise missile interception capability. Number 14. Arleigh Burke Class Destroyer Next up, we have a destroyer from the United States Navy. This ship is the Arleigh Burke Class of Guided Missile Destroyer, and as you may expect, its primary purpose 
is to use the Aegis combat system and provide interception capabilities with advanced radar systems. First commissioned in 1991, these destroyers have multi-mission capability, both offensively and defensively, and there are currently what's called three flights of categories. Flight 1 includes the first 21 of these ships, Flight 2 is the next seven, and then Flight 3 thereafter. In 2018, the United States Navy also released plans to upgrade their existing destroyers to keep them in service for longer. These improvements included hangars for helicopters, as well as new software systems, and a bunch of sonar junk with extra missiles and an upgraded Aegis radar. So, everything is extra shiny and new, and even better at destroying things. Huzzah! That is all these ships are meant to be about, after all. Number 13. Type 055 Destroyer These next ships are actually China's most formidable warships, and amongst the most dangerous of their kind in the world. Belonging to the People's Liberation Army Navy, the Type 055 is a Renai-class guided missile cruiser. They are the Chinese Navy's long-range surface combatants and are designed to provide an escort to the Navy's fleet of aircraft carriers. Mainly, though, it appears that the goal of these ships is to show the rest of the world that China has everything that everyone else has. And more! And you should not mess with them or their Navy. So, the ship has a vertical launch system with 64 launchers of an 8x8 configuration and 48 more launchers in a 6x8 configuration. That's a whole lot of missile launching capability. They also have a whole bunch of different surface-to-air missiles available and have a range between 100 nautical miles and 290 nautical miles between them. These tubes are also alleged to be able to launch anti-submarine missiles as well as land attack cruise missiles, so that's all very unreassuring then. Number 12. Admiral Gorshkov Class Frigate Next up we have another Russian Navy offering, where this time we're looking at the Admiral Gorshkov Class Frigate. These are a multi-role warship, which has at least two in service and six or more under construction at present. These ships are designed to be versatile and are able to perform multiple different roles from long-range attacks to anti-submarine warfare to escort missions and attacks against ships. You know, all the fun stuff. So as you may expect, these vessels do come equipped with all of the killing stuff that we've come to know and fear. There is that vertical launch system which can be employed to send off land attack cruise missiles over a range of 2,500 kilometers. And then there are anti-ship missiles and land attack missiles that have a range of more than 500 kilometers and anti-submarine missiles with torpedo drop ranges of 50 kilometers. As well as all of that dangerous stuff, there's also an adaptation which allows for these launchers to send up air defense missiles and interceptor missiles. It's all a very missile-centric sort of ship to be honest, but then again, the Russian Navy does love a good launching of a jolly good missile now, doesn't it? Number 11. Akazuki Class Destroyer Here we are again back in the Second World War, where Japan was the enemy of the United States and they had a lot of dangerous equipment that was feared by the Allies, rather than like these days when it's all built in tandem with them. This is the Akazuki class destroyer. It was built in 1942 at the height of the war to complement the Imperial Japanese Navy's existing Kagero class ships. These vessels were primarily employed in anti-aircraft procedures, but it soon turned out that they could be employed in multiple different sorts of capacities and were slightly regarded by the IGN at the time. These vessels were heavily armed for the purposes of anti-aircraft ability, and as the war would make progress, they were fitted with more and more big guns precisely for this specific purpose. By the end of 1944, the remaining vessels in the class were armed with a total of 41 Type 96 guns. Twelve of those destroyers were built during the war between its development in 1942 and the ending of the war in 1945. Six of these would be lost in combat, with the remaining six ultimately retired from service. Number 10. Hobart Class Destroyer Another point, another destroyer. This is the Royal Australian Navy's Hobart Class Destroyer. It's based on the F-100 frigate and is equipped, like so many of the others, with the Aegis Combat System. 
It's designed to provide air defense for accompanying ships as well as self-protection against aircraft and missiles. These ships are designed to carry one helicopter, which is to be used for surveillance and for response to provide support in warfare situations. It includes, amongst its arsenal, long-range anti-ship missiles and a big old naval gun that has the capability of firing long-range missiles. As well as all of this, the Hobart class is soon to be equipped with all the singing and dancing contemporary sonar systems and a bunch of decoys and surface launch torpedoes. What a fun one! Number 9. Independence Class Littoral Combat Ship These ships are a big part of the U.S. Navy's marine combat operations, designed to operate in the littoral zone, that is the area close to the shore, an order was originally placed for 55 of these warships back in the early 2000s. However, the production and running cost for these vessels has turned out to be three times more expensive than what was originally estimated. And that is not really ideal. The unique shape of the hull on this ship is designed to be high speed, and the ship can operate at about 40 knots. The Littoral Combat Ship, or LCS, is equipped in many different ways for the various roles that it can be set to perform. There are different packages that may be applied in anti-submarine warfare, surface warfare, and special warfare missions. These are meant to be changeable in any commercial port in only a few hours, which allows the vessel to be made ready for any number of potential missions in the face of any number of potential threats. But despite all the good intentions, these things can actually take several weeks to change the modules. Oh well, it was a good idea at the time. Number 8. The Sea Hunter Next up, we have a slightly different take on the warship, where we have the Sea Hunter, an autonomous unmanned surface vehicle. This means that this vessel is self-piloting, and it's designed to maneuver in all kinds of conditions without the need for an onboard crew. It's crazy, but there it is. The Sea Hunter has been part of the DARPA program for anti-submarine warfare continuous trail unmanned vessels, and it's an experimental vessel that's powered by two diesel engines. It can apparently carry 14,000 gallons of fuel and travel up to 10,000 nautical miles at 12 knots on a full tank. That is supposed to be enough to travel from San Diego to Guam and back to Pearl Harbor on only one tank of gas. If only my Grand Jeep Cherokee did so well on fuel. There are meant to be people operating the vehicle from afar, but not actually controlling it the entire time. Rather, they're always observing and prepared to take over if the machine goes haywire. So that's very reassuring. It is still in the testing stages and is anticipated to be years before it will be part of the United States Navy. Number 7. The USS Zumwalt The USS Zumwalt is a United States Navy guided missile destroyer, meaning that it's a ship which is equipped with loads of guided missiles that are employed during battle to provide anti-aircraft warfare for the naval fleet. What a fun one! The USS Zumwalt is a relatively new addition to the United States Navy. It was first commissioned in Baltimore in October of 2016 and was designed to have a multi-million dollar capability. This particular destroyer class is specially created for combat in deep water and is designed to support ground troops in attacks on land as well as the usual naval destroyer jobs of anti-air cover and anti-submarine warfare. So she's an all-arounder, and she's also got an appearance that's rather unlike any other naval destroyer that's come before. This angular boxy shape is more like a spaceship than a seafaring one, and it's been tested for the ultimate poor conditions at sea. The vessel's wave-piercing bow is inverted, and the shape of the ship has been sculpted to reduce the radar cross-section. All in all, the USS Zumwalt is a modern warship that's been designed and tested to withstand contemporary battle conditions and provide backup in every arena of war. Number 6. The HMS Queen Elizabeth The Queen Elizabeth class aircraft carrier is the fleet flagship of the Royal Navy. 
It has a capacity for carrying 60 aircraft, whether they happen to be autonomous vehicles, rotary wing, or fixed wing. Commissioned back in 2017, the HMS Queen Elizabeth entered service with the Royal Navy in 2020. The ship was designed with flexibility in mind. It can carry a multitude of combinations of aircraft and has space to accommodate 250 Royal Marines. It can also support attack helicopters and troop transport copters like Chinooks. The ship also includes defensive weapons, having anti-aircraft and anti-missile defense systems, as well as the potential to carry various guns, although it is not always fitted with them. Number 5. The Ticonderoga Class These ships are also known as the Aegis Cruiser on the account of their being equipped with the Aegis Combat Management System. These U.S. Navy-guided missile cruisers are mainly employed in a battle force role and have multi-mission capabilities, designed to be able to handle air warfare, undersea warfare, naval service warfare, fire support, and surface warfare situations. As well as all the usual gear, these cruisers are equipped with Tomahawk cruise missiles. This means that they have long strike warfare capability, and some even have been equipped with ballistic missile defense capabilities. These ships are in the program for cruiser modernization that is presently being implemented all across the United States Navy, meaning that for the next decade or so, they will undergo updating and upgrading in order to improve their anti-submarine capabilities as well as adding fancier weapons and sensor systems. The plan is to make the fleet more cost-effective while being more competitive for longer. Fingers crossed for all of that then. Number 4. Kolkata Class Destroyer Next up, we have the Indian Navy's main destroyer, the Kolkata Class or Project 15A. These are guided missile destroyers that are apparently equipped with state-of-the-art gear and are an integral part of India's plans to have a blue water navy, meaning that it wants a navy that's able to operate across all deep waters of the world's oceans and on a global level at long range. Oddly enough, there are many nations which don't actually have this ability, and those that can only operate in the waters that are close to shore. These are also known as brown water navy or littoral navies, and those that have near-to-shore and open-water capabilities are called green water navies. I really don't know how much sense I just made. These destroyers are an essential component in the Indian Navy's campaign to be a competitive force for nature. They're not stealth vessels by any stretch of the means, but they do have a reduced radar cross-section. They're crewed by 390 and have the space for two helicopters, with their weapon systems including nuclear-capable supersonic cruise missiles, air defense missiles, as well as anti-submarine rocket launchers, torpedoes, close-in weapon systems, machine guns, and a dual-purpose artillery gun. Propelled Combined Gas and Gas, or COGAG, they have two gas turbine plants and four reversible gas turbines with two gearboxes. The ship has a top speed of 30 knots, and the things are super expensive. In fact, the cost of these ships just keep overrunning, and at present they're estimated to cost somewhere in the region of $950 million each. And when the project is complete, it's believed it will likely cost an eye-watering $2.8 billion in total. These ships have actually already been succeeded by an improved class destroyer that's planned to have improved stealth capability and a whole bunch of better stuff under the hood. Hopefully, it will turn out slightly more cost-effective as well. Number 3. The Type 45 Destroyer this is the Daring class, or Type 45 class destroyer, that was built for the Royal Navy to replace the Type 42, or Sheffield class. These Type 45 class destroyers are the most advanced warships in service in today's Royal Navy, and initially they were due to be Horizon class ships, like those that are operated by the French and Italians. The joint project fell through for the UK when it was beset by delays and disagreements. And so, they went ahead and created their own destroyer, the result of which is this, the Daring class. There were six of these Type 45 anti-air warfare destroyers that were completed. They're mostly designed to perform in anti-aircraft and anti-missile warfare situations. 
These are the first Royal Navy vessels that have gender-neutral accommodations to house male and female crew members, and they have individual cubicles instead of the old-style communal showers and toilets. The main purpose of these ships is to provide advanced air defense. They're equipped with Sea Viper air defense systems that use Samson Active Electronically Scanned Array Multifunction Radar. It can track over 2,000 targets while simultaneously controlling and coordinating multiple missiles. As well as the high-end anti-air stuff, these ships are also extremely well-equipped for anti-ballistic missile capabilities. They're frequently called the most advanced anti-air warfare vessels in the whole world. And given their hefty price tag, they really should be. Number 2. The Dock Du Class Amphibious Assault Ship Next up, we have the Dock Du Class Amphibious Assault Ship. These are the biggest ships in the Republic of Korea Navy, and they're somewhat cheekily named Dokdu, which is the name of an island that has been at the center of a long-standing ownership dispute between South Korea and Japan. Anyways, antagonism of that sort aside, these ships are a different sort of posturing and another part of the South Korean Navy's efforts to become that elusive thing, the Blue Water Navy. These warships can accommodate a whole battalion of 700 Marines, 10 tanks, and 7 amphibious armored personnel carriers. There are other reports that would suggest that this has the capabilities to carry as many as 200 trucks and other light vehicles as well. The ships have the space for up to 16 helicopters, but they usually carry 10. There's a flight deck, a hangar, and two elevators, and although the warship has been generally equipped for combat types of stuff, it can also be adapted to serve in disaster relief operations, and when it comes to armament, the ship carries 21-cell rolling airframe missile launchers kitted out with short-range dance missiles. It has two close-in weapon systems that are designed to engage any potential incoming anti-ship missiles, and defense is the aim with this ship. The overall use is the transportation of troops and equipment. Number 1. The USS Gerald Ford this is the current class of nuclear-powered aircraft carrier that's produced for and used by the United States Navy. There are a total of 10 of these massive floating structures planned in the future, and as the existing aircraft carriers gradually go out of service, the plan is to replace them with these. Now, we've already had a look at the Enterprise, which has been outclassed by this newer model, and there are plans to eventually replace all the Nimitz-class carriers as well. These gigantic ships do have some things in common with the Nimitz class, but with a bunch of upgrades like the electromagnetic aircraft launch system and a whole selection of other efficiency improving upgrades and all the important operating cost reduction design features. These aircraft carriers are as large as previous classes, but they've been redesigned to operate with a smaller crew. So the Navy, like everywhere else, is replacing people with technology in the name of efficiency savings. That's all from the high seas for today. There were a lot of very dangerous looking destroyers now weren't there? Which of these ships do you think is the most interesting? Let me know all about it in the comments below, check out the other cool things on the screen, and I will see you next time.